This is a quick start tutorial to help you get started with the low poly character Mia you just purchased. The low poly character Mia is compatible with Cinema 4D Prime, Release 14 and higher. Uh, in this quick start tutorial I'm going to show you how to save the Cinema 4D file along with the textures that are already mapped on the character, how to work with the UV maps of the character, and uh, we will also take a look at the user interface and I will also provide you with a few tips to speed up the performance while you're working with the low poly character Mia. So here you have the textures that are already mapped onto the character and we have provided you with the same textures as UV maps in form of layers. We will take a look at that later. We also give you a couple of tutorials to help you get started to pose Mia. And this is Mia, the Cinema 4D file. So you just open it by double clicking on it. The first thing we're going to do is to do two things to speed up the performance. First of all, we're going to unfold the no object Mia and we're going to turn off the hypernerves. In release 15 it's called subdivision surface, but it's basically the same thing. And we turn it off by clicking on the green check mark and it turns into a red cross. We also included a couple of joint driven morphs that work in Cinema 4D Prime but they make the performance a bit slower, so we're going to turn them off. We go to the Layers tab, and we're going to make the layer Mia deformiert, the last layer visible, by clicking here. And here we have the Expressor tag that contains the Joint Driven Morphs, and we're just going to disable it. Don't worry, now there are a couple of morphs that will be affected by it, which are um, the eyebrows and the eyes. You will only see the results of those movements when you enable the Express Attack again. Now, to open the user interface, you just double click on this tag next to the Girl Master Controller. We're going to unfold the Girl Master Controller because we need to connect the user interface with Cinema 4D whenever we start it. So if I, for example, double click on this area, which is the hip, you will see that the No Object Hip controller is automatically selected inside the Objects Manager. And I just click on it, and there, the connection is there. Um, we just need to activate the User Data tab, because this is where all the sliders are. If I now double click on any other area, I will be able to see the corresponding sliders inside the Attributes Manager. The user interface has three tabs, Body, Hands, and Kinect. The Kinect tab is uh, an additional plugin that we sell that allows you to build your own motion capture system starting at Cinema 4D Prime R14. Using, you can use Microsoft's Connect to record your uh, to record your movements, and then you can apply them to, for example, this character Mia, or you can apply those recordings and also edit those recordings through Forward Kinematic to any character of your own that is completely rigged and weighed. Um, okay, so let's take a look at this now. Let's go back to the hip. And I'm going to show you a couple of things here. We have done these two things to the express attack, turned it off, and also the hypernerves, we turned it off, to speed up the, the performance in Cinema 4D. So right now, I can see in real time the movements that I'm making. Um, you can move each body part and rotate it, chest, right, left, the same with uh, the abdomen and you can also position your character in Cinema 4D whichever way you want. Maybe you want to position your character by moving it around freely 
And if, if you don't want to position it through the sliders and you need to move it freely for whatever reason, you can do that, but you will have to quickly turn off the corresponding expresso tag. And that is easily done. We just go to the expresso tag next to the Go Master Controller. In the Attributes Manager, we uncheck Enable. And now we can call the skeleton. We go to Layers and we make the skeleton vi visible that says Skeleton Mia. We make it visible and we can see it now here. And now we can move Mia around anywhere we want just by moving these handles, right? Um, I'm just going to undo the things that I did. I'm also going to make the skeleton invisible again because we don't need it right now. I'm going to enable the master controller again. So, for example, um, we urge you to save all cinema for D files under different names so that you keep the default settings. If you don't want to do that, at least move to a different frame above zero. We have set keyframes for all default values at frame zero. So if you move anything and you just go one frame back and forth, you will have the standard T-pose back again. So let's move to keyframe 10. And we're just going to move the leg maybe a bit forth. And we are also going to bow the knee a little bit. And we can now set keyframes for the new values so that we keep them by control clicking on this yellow area. It, this area turns yellow whenever the default value has been changed. So now we can go back to frame 0, we have the default setting, and we can also move back to frame 10, and we have the new values already saved in Cinema 4D. If you do save this file under a new name, don't forget to save it in the same hierarchy as the texture folder. That way Cinema 4D will be able to find we're just going to save this to find the textures and you will see that the textures will still be mapped onto the figure even after I saved it. I can quickly render the view inside Cinema 4D's editor window and you will see the textures are still there. Now let's take a quick look at the UV maps. Um, most of the textures or that, cinema f that uh, the low poly character Mia has are UV maps, but there are areas, for example, of the shoes or of the pants that are not UV mapped because they just have a flat entire color and uh, this color was just applied through a polygon selection. Okay, let's minimize this and take a look at the UV maps. You can edit these UV maps. We can take a look at it. Let's open Mia Face Blank. They're basically all in the same format, so this will give you a very good idea on what you can do with the files that we are providing you with. You can open them in Cinema in Photoshop, sorry, and we have distributed them in different layers. So you have the outline on one layer and you have the background on another layer and you can make them visible or invisible as you require. Uh, I, we recommend that you use a new layer. I'm just going to call this Quick Start to modify to modify the UV map. And these lines are actually they show you the direction that polygons go to. So it's better if you always draw along those lines to avoid maybe weird mapping of the texture. But what we are going to do, we're just going to put a green rectangle maybe on the nose so that you can see the result in Cinema 4D and you can see how quickly we can load this texture into Cinema 4D. So we just save this file under a different name so that you always keep the 
the standard blank file of the UV map. We're just going to call it Quick Start again. Okay, this is now being saved and we can go back to Cinema 4D and you need to open the Material Manager under Window Material Manager or maybe it's already z there depending on your layout option. So we have just changed the head, right? We're just going to double click on the head to Material and the Material Editor window will open automatically. Um, please choose the color channel just by clicking on it. The textures are, lo are loaded into the color channel. So if you click on these three points next to Mia Phase 6.jpg, you can change the path of the texture. Uh, usually, if you make a new texture, you should save it in the text folder that I showed you before. Uh, if you don't do it, you will see what happens. Cinema 4D will ask if you need a copy in the project location. Uh, we're going to say no because this is not our final, our final UV map. We're not going to keep it. I'm just showing you what it looks like. Here you already have your green nose and we left the outline on so that you can see how it is mapped onto the low poly character. So this is the way that you map new textures onto your character looks a bit weird right now, but this is not our final texture. So you can modify all the UV maps to give Mia a completely new and different look. We have now looked at how to save the Cinema 4D file so that the textures are automatically mapped onto the character. We have taken a look at how to modify and reload the UV maps in Cinema 4D and Remember that you can speed up the performance by turning the hypernerves on and off and by also turning the joint-driven morphs on and off. Remember, if you turn the joint-driven morphs off, uh, some morphs, some sliders will not show the effect like closing the eyes or the eyebrows or the hair, the change of the hair, unless it's enabled again. Okay, I hope that you will have fun with the character Mia and that you visit us for more plugins and tutorials for Cinema 4D at our website www.coboltcharacteranimation.com.